Well, welcome back to part two of the disaster series, AKA a man with no mechanical experience trying to get his 800 pound, 300,000 mile Volvo XC90 through its MOT. In the last episode, I struggled to undo lots of the old corroded suspension nuts and bolts and therefore left them overnight sprayed with lots of special penetrating fluid. It wasn't all a complete disaster though, as I learned so much and even successfully replaced the passenger side power fold wing mirror. So first on the agenda today then is to see if I can retackle those stubborn suspension components now that I've acquired a one and a half meter long metal bar. So despite using a combination of different tools and methods, putting my breaker bar into the control arm and trying to lever on it, using the metal extender pole to try and lever it even more, and a hammer, I just couldn't get this control arm to break loose. So this control arm obviously doesn't want to come loose whatsoever, but as we're doing the ball joint as well, maybe we could just remove the ball joint with the control arm still attached and then we can do away the whole lot of it really, can't we? But I know that these ball joints are probably as difficult, if not even more difficult to remove. So before heading straight to sabotage mode and trying to smash everything out of place in one go, I thought I'd remove the other bolts holding the control arm in place. This consisted of a 18 mil at the bottom, but 21 mil at the top bolt that came out from underneath, and then two 17 mil bolts at the back holding it in place. Although this also wasn't without its problems. So you can see, because of where this uh, 17 mil is, it's a very difficult place to get to. I've just finally managed to find a breaker bar that I think just about gets in there and with some leverage I can, yes, yes, yes. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm finally getting this to spin. Oh, this is, oh, come on. Yes, oh. Thank God, I really didn't think this was gonna come off, but I think we might be in luck. Yes! <laughs> we got the old control arm. Off you come. Off you come. I got that bit out there. Yes! Ah! I cannot believe that. If we look at the MOT sheet, I believe, I hope I've just done the right side first, um, it is this here, this bush in there, that rubber bush that we're looking at now in here. I believe that is what's caused the MOT failure for this item. Oh no, maybe it's that one. Yeah, that one as well. You can see the bush is completely perished. And if we grab the new lower control arm for this side, on this side, look, the bush is complete. And here, it's, there's no cracking or tearing. Again, if we just compare it over here, it's a little bit cracked on this one. And this one is pretty, pretty torn and missing a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the actual bush itself. So that's what was the MOT failure. The tricky bit is going to be getting it all back on. So that was just the easy bit. But I'm, I'm chuffed that I managed to do it. But having said that, now I literally couldn't drive the car away if I had to. So let's try and do the ball joint now. Then I might look at the sway bar again. Um, but I think the main focus is going to be trying to do the ball joint. If that fails, we'll just try and get the control arm on because the ball joint wasn't a failure, I don't think. And actually, the ball joint, to be honest, looks quite good. But I think we'll, we'll, try, and, we'll try and change it anyway. <laughs> two 14 millimeter bolts out of the ball joint. Um, but the tricky bit is it's completely sealed. So I don't have an air hammer or anything like that, but there's a couple of little notches there. So I reckon I can get a bit of metal or something and then hammer it down on both sides. I think there's two, yeah. And then try and set it free. But we're, we're making progress. This is really good. It's working. 
working. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing this. I think this ball joint's actually going to come out. Yes! <laughs> Guys, I cannot believe I've just done that. I've got the control arm off on the near side, which is the MOT failure side, and uh, just got the ball joint out as well, without a hammer, gun, or anything like that. So, um, I'm going to clean it up with a wire brush, which I've got, I think I've got one of those, and then I'm going to stick some of this anti seize copper grease inside the ball joint so that the next poor sod that has to change it hopefully won't have such a bad time of it. I think this is also good for the longevity of the ball joint itself. Oh wow, what a day! So let me quickly interrupt proceedings here in the Audi TT to say a very big thank you to Exeter for sponsoring today's video. Now, Exeter are the awesome company responsible for sending me this beautiful navy leather card holder. I've wanted one of these for a while because I'm always carrying around this huge bulky wallet, which I really don't like anymore. And this has the ability to hold up to 12 cards, cash and coins, and you can flick this button here to gain access to your cards just like that. It's super quick, it's super sleek, and it just goes into your pocket so much easier than one of those old bulky wallets. But I've also got one of these tracker cards from Exeter, which you can slip into your wallet like so, very simple, and you're never gonna lose it because this is gonna tell you exactly where it is at all times. So I've got the Chipolo app on my phone. Now what we can do at any point is ring your phone. So if we press this button in the app here, it plays a very tuneful noise uh, to help you locate your wallet. So actually, if you if you ever misplace it, which is something I do on a daily basis, I don't know about you, I'm so clumsy and lose my wallet all the time. That's in there now. If it's somewhere in a drawer that I've forgotten about, press ring and I'll be able to find it. But also, yeah, for any sort of theft, it's perfect. I do love products like this that are just so well made and so beautiful. And also, I could sit and smell them all day, which is very strange, but I do actually do that. It smells amazing. So if you want to get yourself one of these, a tracker, a laptop case, or all of the above, click the link on screen or in the description now to get yourself 25% off with my code, it's Joel. Okay, so I've greased up the hole and uh, time to get the new ball joint. It comes with new bolts as well. I'll take the blue cover off. If we compare it to the old one, it looks pretty much identical, like for like. So I'm simply gonna go ahead then and try and place this in. You can hand tighten the new nuts through there and then we'll torque it up properly. Well, there's the Audi TT sat outside. I'm using that to get to and from the workshop this week. And here's the Volvo. So today, I tell you what, we are making, oh, it's, it's so much better than yesterday. We're making a lot of progress. So we've managed to get the old control arm off, as you've seen. There it is on the floor. There's the new one waiting to go on. Uh, but I've also managed to remove the ball joint and uh, put on a new one. So that's fitted. I've torqued that up to 39 Newton meters or as near as I could get with my sort of hand torque wrench there. First time I've ever actually torqued anything up. So hopefully I've done that correctly. Looks like it's fitted pretty well. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Uh, now, while I've got all of this off, I figure before I put the control arm on, there was one item on the has locked itself it does that this car so Volvo picked up on this two front ABS pickup rings now I'm hoping that that's what's causing the ABS light because on the MOT it failed because of an ABS light on here and so I think I should change the pickup rings now I have actually got these two OEM approved ABS rings, these are on the end of the drive shaft, I believe, where it sort of attaches to the hub. So as we've got everything off already, or at least the control arm off, I don't think it'll take me too much to get the 
drive shafts sort of slipped out so we can replace these rings. I don't know how difficult it is to do and I don't know if this will actually solve the issue with the ABS light. I feel like even if it is the right thing to fix, I'll probably still need a code reader or something to, uh, to reset it, something like VIDA. Anyway, as I've got them, as we've got most of the stuff off, I feel like we're making good enough progress to have time to do the ABS, ABS ring, sorry. So here they are. So you just do the left-hand side to start with. Volvo said it was them that was causing the problem. So let's fix them and, and, and see. So to change the ABS pickup rings, you have to slip the drive shaft out of the hub. And to be able to slip the drive shaft out of the hub, you need to first remove this bolt at the end and at the center of the hub on the alloy wheel side. And this was my first issue in that the brake disc was just spinning and so I had to find something makeshift to jam the brakes on in the car so that it wouldn't spin and I could get leverage on the bolt. So once I used my makeshift brake pedal holder, it was completely straightforward to remove the bolt from the center of the hub. It came straight out with ease. However, what I couldn't seem to do is get the drive shaft to pop out on the other side, which is what would give me enough access to the ABS ring in order to change it. One way of persuading the drive shaft to pop out from the hub is by hammering something into the hole that I just created by removing the bolt. However, I just couldn't get any sort of movement on the drive shaft and ended up hammering the metal piece I was using into it. Oh, I've got a <laughs> now I realized I probably shouldn't have used a metal piece and at this point, I just got really scared that I was gonna be causing some damage and decided to abort the mission. To be honest, even if I had been able to get the drive shaft out from the hub, I think I would have needed to use some sort of angle grinder or saw to actually get the old ABS ring off. Now these were tools that I didn't have access to and even if I did, wouldn't really feel comfortable using. So I did finally manage to remove this metal bit from the center of the hub, put the bolt back in where it was and left it as I found it. And so in this case with the ABS rings, I wasn't able to fix it. I do wonder if potentially changing the ABS sensors while I was in there would have been a good thing to do. But again, don't have this garage much longer and I didn't have the parts available to me. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to leave the ABS rings. I was trying desperately to move the drive shaft away from the hub so that I could access the ABS ring. But even if I had done that, I'd have probably need to use the angle grinder or like a, a saw to actually get the ABS ring off, which I don't have. And also I was having all sorts of fun and games, even getting the drive shaft to slip out in the first place. It, I was watching a video on how it should go and it just wasn't going like that at all. So I'm going to leave the ABS rings and try and get myself a copy of Vida or similar before I have the retest for the MOT to see if I can clear the MOT, uh, clear the ABS light. So I'm going to leave those. Instead, I'm now going to focus on the anti-roll bars. I think I, I should be able to, to do those quite quickly. It's not something I need to do for the MOT, uh, but it was something Volvo picked up on. So as I've got them, as we're here, I might as well change them now. Now, thanks to all your comments on last week's video, I am cringing editing this because of course, I'm not changing the anti-roll bars, I'm changing the drop links. However, I'm not really changing them because despite using all the leverage I had at my disposal, I couldn't get these bolts to break loose. I tried holding mole grips on the back whilst I was spinning at the front, but I just couldn't get anywhere with this. So today was turning out to be a little bit of a disaster, although I was still extremely satisfied with managing to get the control arm off and that new ball joint installed. So speaking of the control arm and knowing now that I wasn't really getting anywhere with the drop links, I thought the best use of the rest of today would be to try and get the new control arm in place. Right, so quick update. Um, I'm considerably darker than I once was with all of this oil and crap all over me, but um, we are, well, sort of making progress with the control arm. It's taken me about 45 minutes, but I've managed to get one of the bolts through. I just think I'm gonna have to keep readjusting it because I've got this one through over here. Don't know how well you can pick that up. However, on this side, these two 15 millimeters, actually they're 17 millimeters, um, they're not threading through, so it's all not quite lined up yet. I'm doing them here against the, what, subframe, I guess that is, first, and then I will try and line it up with the ball joint later. 
Uh, but yeah, this has proven to be a little bit challenging. Okay, so we've got a bit of a problem actually, and it's not my face being covered in muck. Uh, I was just getting the last part of the lower control arm done. I was trying to fit it in to the ball, ball joint at the bottom, but it just wasn't sort of lining up and it looked really funny, like it was all wrong. And then I looked at the ball joint again and thought, that doesn't look right. It was so bent and then a piece of one of these silver bits on, on the ball joint fell off. So that's a bit odd. And I compared it to the other new one I've got for the other side and you can see the lower part there where the bolt is, is straight on this new one and it's bent on the one that I fitted. So obviously inadvertently, probably when I was messing around with the stupid drive shaft, I've obviously done something and, and, and bent this, which is not very good. So it means that obviously that's unusable, I'm gonna throw that away. Uh, it means I'm gonna to have to refit a ball joint, which is fine, because I do have another one for the other side, but it means I'm, um, I'm in the time I've got, I'm just gonna be able to do the one side in terms of the ball joint because I won't get the parts in time before I have to give the keys back to this garage. So that's a bit of a pity. Having said that, it is only the passenger side that I'm worried about fitting everything to to get it through the MOT. Um, it'd be nice to have ball joints and everything done on both sides, obviously, but with the time I've got and the purpose of just getting car for the MOT without, you know, you know, it's pointless spending any time or money on this car if it doesn't get an MOT. So I just need to do the bare minimum to, to scrape it through at this point. So I'm gonna refit this ball joint and then be super careful fitting the, the lower control arm back on because I don't wanna bend it. Otherwise we'll be putting the old one back in, I suppose. So uh, yeah, that's a bit, of a, a bit of a weird one, but you can see by the state of me, um, sort of is a, is a good uh, good representation of how I'm feeling anyway. It's about 30 Celsius today. We're having sort of a, uh, another heat wave. As soon as it hits September, by the way, it gets hot. Just as the kids all go back to school, they come home from their summer holidays camping in the Welsh countryside where it's been raining and drizzly as it does in August. And then, yeah, literally the week, everyone goes back to school. 30, 31, 32, I think, by tomorrow. Anyway. Let's put this new ball joint in and then just try not to bend it, I guess. So you'll be pleased to hear that I managed to get the new, new ball joint onto the car without any issues whatsoever. However, this was now where the trouble would really start for me in getting this new control arm back onto the car and specifically onto the hub and the ball joint. Well guys, to be honest with you, I'm stuck and I'm feeling a little bit defeated here. I've been spending the last two hours trying to get the lower control arm uh, attached at the ball joint end, which involves jacking up the wheel hub, supporting that, taking out the bolts attached to the strut, meaning that I can then position and angle the hub to line up with the control arm and then I sort of leverage the control arm itself to, to slip it into place but that's how it's meant to go anyway it's not gone that way and uh, I've tried lots of different things but currently yeah I'm struggling to get this guy onto the ball joint and yeah that's two hours and obviously if I can't get this back on then, well, the car's undrivable, isn't it? You can't drive without a control arm. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit stuck. I don't quite know what I'm gonna do. I've got one more day here at the garage tomorrow. And then obviously the car has to get out of here. So I'm a little bit worried about that, to be honest with you. But, I'll tell you what, the amount I've learned even if it's been sort of unsuccessful in the work I've been doing. The amount I've learned over these past couple of days so far is quite remarkable. Uh, but yeah, I'm an absolute mess. I'm gonna go home now, come back tomorrow, 
we had a we had a much better day today than we did yesterday so fingers crossed we can just get that done then we can look at doing this side but also we need to polish machine polish those headlights which will be nice and fun and i think there's a couple of other bits as well to get the new wheels on the front for the tire treads but yeah i'm just a bit worried about getting the suspension all back together before i have to drive this car out of here and to the mot center <laughs> So on the face of it, all we've actually managed to do today is remove an old control arm and fit a new ball joint, twice. However, you cannot put a price on the amount of things I've learned over these past couple of days. I can only liken it to the five years I spent learning French at school and actually learning more in the one week I spent in actual France than I did in the five years of sitting in classrooms. There really is no replacement for getting in there and getting your hands dirty and that's how I feel with this whole series that I am learning so much and the value of that goes much further than actually just getting this Volvo through its MOT. However, despite that, next week I've really got my work cut out. Not only do I have to get the suspension back together, but I need to get those new wheels on, I need to get the headlights sorted, I need to look at the fuel injector and new number plates too. So <laughs> next week is going to be crazy. If you've been enjoying this series and you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up here on YouTube and make sure you're subscribed if you do not want to miss part three once that comes out. Thank you all so much for watching this video. And as by popular request, I've left some outtakes in for you at the end. Thanks all so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon. Come on. Come on, you bastard. How the f*** do I get this off? Come on, you little bastard. Way! <laughs> there it is. Ugh. This has literally been my entire life, is just looking for these. F***ing... Hi. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs>